Welcome everyone. We are just going to give it one minute or so before we start. All right, it is noon, so we will begin. Welcome everyone to our educational webinar on improving the vaccination experience. We will hear about practical tips to improve vaccine confidence by using strategies to reduce stress when vaccinating neurodiverse patients. My name is Mary Lizakowski and I am a coalition Health Director with Foundation for Healthy North Dakota. It is a nonprofit established in 2022, and we are comprised of a small team. Our mission is to promote health and wellness by working at the community level across North Dakota. We are building a statewide coalition to allow local communities to collaborate and work together on common initiatives. And by joining the coalition, members will be the first to know about educational opportunities such as this the latest on relevant public health information, legislative updates, and access to digital advocacy resources and toolkits. Just some housekeeping things to uh, touch on. Webinar attendees will be automatically muted for the presentation. If you have questions, please put them in the Q&A box and our team will be monitoring uh, the Q&A box. There are some resources that were put in the chat that you can check out. Um, we will be recording the presentation and we'll leave time in the end to address any questions. And after the presentation, a link to the recording will be sent out along with an evaluation survey to complete. It is my pleasure to introduce our presenters today. First, Danielle Hall. She is the National Program Manager for the Vaccine Education Initiative at the Autism Society. Danielle has a master's degree in social work with an emphasis on public health. She brings more than 20 years of experience in planning, designing, evaluating, and managing programs to promote health, equity, and access. Danielle lives in New Jersey with her husband, two girls, and Cocker Spaniel. Next, we have Ali Tache. She is the Director of National Programs for the Autism Society of America. Ali holds a Master's in Leadership and Organizational Development and a bachelor's in exceptional education. She has served the autism community her entire career as an educator, advocate, learner, and leader fueled by coffee and fierce passion for disability justice. Prior to joining the national team, Allie served as board member for the Autism Society of Greater Wisconsin as chairperson of the Program Services Committee and member of the Conference Committee, Board Development Committee, and Adult Support Committee. Allie lives in Wisconsin with, with her nature-loving family. When her adventure adventures in parenting pause, she loves reading, live music, dark chocolate, and great conversations with friends around the campfire. Thanks for being here, and I will turn it over to you both. Thank you, Mary, and thank you for having us today. It's an honor to be able to present our vaccine education initiative to the Foundation for a Healthy North Dakota. Um, today, we'll be sharing lessons that we learned through our vaccine education initiative and the incredible impact that we have within the autism and disability community when we work together. We built in time and questions at the end of our presentation, and we welcome comments and questions as well. Before we begin discussing accessible vaccinations, it's important to have a good understanding of who we are and why the Autism Society is charting this type of work. 
The Autism Society of America is the nation's largest and oldest grassroots autism organization, and we've been serving the Autism Society community since 1965. It's our mission to create connections, empowering everyone in the autism community with the resources they need to live fully. With 70 affiliates across the country, we serve more than half a million people each year through education, advocacy, information and referral, support services, and community programming. As a national network with local roots, we have that unique understanding of the diversity within the autism community. A little bit about uh, autism. In the United States, one in 36 children are diagnosed with autism and a third will have an intellectual disability. Autism is the fastest growing developmental disability in the US, impacting all racial, ethnic, and socioeconomic groups. And nearly three quarters of autistic children are diagnosed with co-occurring medical or mental health conditions with anxiety affecting up to 40% with autism. And perhaps the most important part to reinforce is vaccines do not cause autism. In fact, the Autism, autism Society believes that improving the vaccination experience is a critical step towards achieving more equitable healthcare for people with autism and all neurodiverse individuals. With support from the CDC and the Association of University Centers of Disabilities, the Autism Society launched the Vaccine Education Initiative to address the systemic barriers to care and promote vaccine education, confidence, and access. Before we get into some of those specific community barriers, we thought it was really important to begin with an overview of autism, starting with the broader concept of neurodiversity. While the term, I apologize. While the term neurodiversity originated within the autism community, the neurodiversity paradigm is not about autism exclusively, but about the full spectrum of neurocognitive variation, recognizing that people experience and interact with the world around them in many different ways, and that there's no one right way of thinking, of learning, of behaving, or of being in this world. And just as computers and phones have different operating systems, so do brains. One isn't better than the other, they're different. And to accommodate for those differences and to provide care that affirms neurodiversity, we can change our approach and adapt to support those differences. Autism is an umbrella term for a range of neurodevelopmental differences that impact the way that the brain processes and uses information. Specifically, autism can impact information processing, communication, sensory processing, social behavior, and emotional regulation. It impacts everyone differently, sometimes in very visible ways and other times in very subtle or in, in invisible ways. Autistic advocate Ashley McKay says the following about this color wheel visualization of autism as a spectrum of difference. The autism spectrum isn't a straight line of severity of symptoms. Instead, think of it as a highly detailed color wheel. Each small curved rectangular segment of each color slice of the wheel represents an autistic trait. The sample diagrams to the right might show how an individual's personal configuration of autistic traits look. And there's a whole spectrum of building blocks that make us who we are. No two autistic people have the exact same set of blocks, but we have our similarities because all of our blocks come from the same place. In short, the uniqueness of each individual experience of autism has been summarized in the quote, once you've met one person with autism, you've met one person with autism. You'll notice us using a range of terms when referring to autism throughout our slides. While many of us have been taught to use person-first language, putting one's personhood before their diagnosis, a growing number of adults surveyed shared their preference for identity first language or autistic rather than person with autism, citing that autism is central to their personhood. But it's important to note that individual preferences vary regarding language from person to person. 
Differences in the way that information is processed, accessed, and used is central to the autistic experience. Some individuals may struggle to process auditory information, but gain access when text is provided. Others may be visual processors, and regardless of their reading level, require visual support to ensure effective understanding. Communications vary from person to person and impact access to expressive and receptive communication. Access to verbal communication varies from person to person and from setting to setting. And access to speech does not always lead to access to effective communication. There are many nuances in language and social communication that can lead to processing and understanding difficulties. There's still much to be learned about communication and barriers in autism. Estimates show that 25 to 30% of autistic individuals will be non-speaking throughout the lifespan, impacting both those with and without intellectual disabilities. Another 20% may lose access to verbal communication when they're highly stressed. Luckily, there has been so much progress in the field, and there are now many alternative forms of communication that can drive access to critical conversation. But still too often, autistic individuals who are non-speaking or who have unreliable speech aren't given the opportunity to engage in health advocacy. When information that is presented is inaccessible and when there are no accommodations in place to allow for alternative methods of communication, the message that is received is often, you won't understand this or you don't need to know this. And to realize health equity, we must accommodate a wider range of information processing. By designing supports for the autistic population, we can improve access for a much broader population, getting us closer to the time when all means all. In addition to communication differences, sensory processing differences can have a big impact on the vaccine appointment and the experience in healthcare settings. Sensory messages are filtered differently for a large majority of autistic individuals, leading to a range of experiences. One person might be sensitive to one type of sensory stimuli, but under-responsive to other types of sensory input. These changes can create challenges in everyday situations that can increase stress and anxiety, impacting one's sense of safety in their body and in the community. To manage sensory sensations, uh, a lot of our community engages in what's referred to as stimming, which is short for self-stimulatory behavior. Now, that is being reframed by many as self-regulatory behavior. It's a form of sensory seeking that aims to keep one's sensory system in balance. Repetitive movements, sounds, or fidgeting can help people with autism stay calm, relieve stress, or block out uncomfortable sensory input. And it can look like many different things. It can look like rocking, flapping, jumping, or spinning. It can look like opening books and inhaling the smell of old ink and paper. It can sound like humming. Regardless of what it looks like or sounds like, autistic advocates are sharing more and more about what stimming feels like, reporting, I don't know why my body needs to do this, but if I don't, I'm headed for sensory overload. Allowing for safe stimming has been central to conversations about autistic wellness in recent years. Too much anxiety, not enough stimuli, or the wrong kinds of sensory input can cause anxiety and even physical pain leading to extreme distress. Sensory overload happens when sensory stimuli overwhelms your ability to cope. This can be triggered by a singular event, like an unexpected loud noise, or it can build up over time due to the amount of effort it takes to cope with sensory sensitivities in daily life. Sensory overload can feel like intense anxiety, a need to escape a situation or difficulty communicating. When the brain has to put all of its resources into sensory processing, it can shut off other functions like speech, decision-making, and information processing. Sensory overload is a common phenomenon shared by children, teens, and adults on the spectrum. One who described their experience saying, if I get sensory overload, then I just shut down. You get what's known as fragmentation, 
It's weird, like being tuned into 40 different TV channels. Some might shut down. Others might experience the autonomic nervous system's fight, fright, and flight different response differently. For many, the healthcare setting creates a perfect storm of anxiety. But the good news is that with increased training and access to accommodative supports, we can reduce stress at every stage of vaccination, improving outcomes for patients, providers, parents, and caregivers. And at the Autism Society, we believe that inclusion is the foundation for the core issues affecting the global community, the global autism community. And it's the foundation of our accessible vaccination model. The Autism Society is dedicated to health equity. Through the Vaccine Education Initiative, we strive to improve patient and population health by ensuring children, adults, and seniors with disabilities are included and supported. As you've heard throughout this presentation, no two experiences of autism will be the same, but one reality that is shared by many is the lack of accessible healthcare solutions. The very fact that we're here today is a sign of great progress, the increase in collaboration for the sake of community. However, the pandemic continues to disproportionately impact autistic individuals. With one in 36 children receiving an autism diagnosis, co-occurring medical and mental health conditions, and premature mortality rates, it is critical that we prioritize health equity in the autism and disability community. In addition to known social determinants of health, the autism community faces unique barriers to accessible healthcare stemming from sensory, social, cognitive, and communication differences. These barriers are too often viewed as patient barriers when in fact they're environmental barriers, resource barriers, training barriers, system, status quo barriers, all which contribute to trust barriers. To realize health equity, we must reframe from these barriers and recognize our collective ability and our responsibility to identify solutions that instead are gonna create access. In 2023, the Autism Society became a proud partner of the Aging and Disability Vaccination Collaborative to increase access and vaccine uptake within the autism and disability community with a focus on the aging, BIPOC, Hispanic, LGBTQIA+, and rural populations. Today, we're gonna to discuss how this model develops for the autism community can benefit all populations. The VEI served as a pilot program, allowing us to learn from our community and to identify best practices, which have led to improved vaccine experiences in communities across the country. And together, we've redesigned the vaccine experience, reducing anxiety at every stage. One of the biggest surprises to us in this work was our own miscalculations surrounding vaccine hesitancy within the autism community. After all, we've been responding to misinformation surrounding vaccination long before the pandemic. We leaned in and heard again and again from parents who are vaccine hesitant, not because they didn't trust the safety or the efficacy of the vaccines, but because they were unwilling to subject their child to a four point restraint and the long lasting trauma related to the vaccine experience. And this is why the VEI supports healthcare professionals, patients and family members and caregivers to eliminate these traumatic practices and rewrite the vaccine experience. We began by listening to those we serve to better understand our community's needs related to vaccine education, confidence and access. The slide includes a sampling of some of the comments that families shared with us about their past experiences. The common themes, as you can see here, include extreme anxiety, fear, crying, and complex medical histories. And as an example, I can read one. His medical trauma, he has medical trauma and will get physical and very anxious. He will not lay down for this reason. Last time, dad had to hold, his, hold him in his lap. The nurses had to hold his legs. You can see the level of anxiety. Local families shared how even just one bad medical experience had the potential to contribute to ongoing trust issues with healthcare families, providers. And while many families commented about how challenging their past experiences were, they also expressed hope that the vaccine process can be transformed to a more positive one. And that's exactly what we're doing. 
As we begin to reimagine the vaccine experience, we've partnered with local vaccinators and trained healthcare providers in the use of tools and strategies guided by our learning from our community members. We developed our guide to accessible vaccine clinics, which offers practical tips that can help transform the vaccine experience for everyone involved, addressing vaccine accessibility before, during, and after vaccination. And that guide is available in both English and Spanish. We'll make sure to drop those links uh, before the end of today's presentation. We're going to, in this next section, break down each part of the guide and discuss supports at every step of the process. Throughout our work in 2022, we took note of the high impact tools and resources that made the difference for participants. And in addition to our guide, we created accessible vaccine kits that support an overall transformed experience. We'll start with the importance of pre-registration and planning ahead. There are a number of barriers to accessibility that occur before anyone steps into a vaccine clinic. The standard vaccine announcement, sign up, and preparation can be modified to increase accessibility, reduce stress, and improve outcomes. We start by using multiple methods to announce and promote vaccine clinics. Some of our affiliates have used social media or posted invitation videos on their website, sharing information about vaccine clinics and how to sign up visually. While this type of support is required uh, for non-readers and for some non-native English speakers, for example, it's beneficial to many more. The registration process is an ex excellent way to gather information needed to support a successful experience. Beyond the standard registration questions, we ask about past vaccine experiences and information about any types of supports that the person receiving the vaccine might find helpful offering visual samples of strategies to choose from. We ask about social communication preferences, recognizing that some benefit from social conversation as a distractor and that for others, any social demand is anxiety producing. So instead of the standard, you're in eighth grade, how is that going? We can equip providers with a patient's favorite subject or passion, reducing what's awkward for some and anxiety producing for others. While the typical vaccine appointment often lasts 15 minutes or less, what many providers might not realize is that families often spend days or even weeks preparing for those 15 minutes. Much of our work to increase accessibility was to develop supports that help individuals and families before the vaccine. We provided a lot of information to caregivers and participants upfront encouraging them to bring items or objects that help them or their loved ones to feel safe. We offer a range of sensory tools, but for some, there are very specific and personalized items from home that carry a deeper sense of safety. If your clinic is unable to support things like fidgets or noise canceling headphones and communication supports, remind family members to bring the supports that help their child in other settings or reach out to the Autism Society about getting some of our vaccine kits. The information provided by families helps us to ensure that we are best prepared the day of the clinic. We also provide supports that ensure vaccine recipients are best prepared, leaning on evidence-based practices for supporting those with autism, including social stories, visual supports, and visual schedules. These plain language resources, social narratives, and step-by-step -step guides are given before the appointment, which create access to information about the vaccine appointment and can reduce anxiety by foreshadowing the process of the vaccine. By creating predictability and structure to an otherwise stressful and chaotic experience, we can reduce anxiety for parents, caregivers, and healthcare professionals alongside patients. And again, while social stories and visual schedules are an evidence-based practice for supporting those with autism, they can support a much wider range of vaccine recipients. This is a perfect example of a strategy that can be generalized to other types of healthcare appointments. Much of the anxiety surrounding healthcare stems from not knowing what to expect. Providers can help their patients prepare for appointments 
by providing a step-by-step -step overview of what will happen for different routine appointments. Earlier, Danielle shared some of the communication differences in our community, and that too often those who communicate non-verbally are left out of healthcare conversations. Simply put, access to communication is central to closing the health equity gap. We've developed communication boards for our vaccine clinics. And in addition to the symbol supports on the front and the letter boards on the back, we welcome participants to uh, indicate written prompts, uh, back and forth um, communication using phones or tablets or other assistive technology that they might use in their daily life. And we reinforce the importance of parent and care caregiver feedback um, for individualized recommendations. By creating this predictability and structure to an otherwise stressful and chaotic experience, we reduce anxiety for patients, family members, and healthcare professionals. And to plan for sensory and environmental support, we identify sensory and physical barriers by mapping out the vaccine appointment from arrival to departure. Designing sensory-friendly environments can mean different things for different people, but these are just some examples of some high-impact strategies that we continue to be go-to supports with relatively simple solutions that can be applied in most settings. You can reduce the fluorescent lights, use half power or equip a go-to room or a space with an inexpensive fire safe light filter. Offer a variety of seating options to allow for space, offer noise canceling headphones or allow for personalized earbuds so they can watch music, YouTube videos, or, other, or offer preferred auditory input. Sensory fidgets, as you will soon see in our accessible vaccine kits, uh, you can select a sensory tube. While this is best practice for some, it can be an incentive for others. Reducing crowds make the route from entry to the vaccination route free of crowding to reduce both sensory and social overwhelm. And if filling out paperwork in a crowded waiting room is a barrier, consider the paperwork can be sent sent in advance. Uh, also provide visual supports, indicating where to go and what to do next. And this can ensure a smooth process and transition from one step to the next. At each clinic, we provide training to healthcare professionals, equipping them with the knowledge and tools they need to meet the diverse needs of our community. This training is a key aspect of our collaborative model, which has celebrated a 99% successful vaccination rate. In our clinics, we offer two types of injection tools, uh, buzzy bees and shot blockers. A buzzy bee is a small device that uses a combination of cooling and vibration to block sharp pain and provide distraction while giving injections uh, or other medical procedures. And the shot blocker is a flexible piece of plastic that uses a number of blunt contact points to saturate the sensory signals surrounding the injection site, distracting the patients from the pain signals of the actual needle poke. It is a simple and non-invasive method um, relying on nerve confusion that can reduce needle pain and anxiety. And these tools are one of many high impact strategies that are making the difference for providers and vaccine recipients. And as we continue to tease throughout our presentation, we offer accessible vaccine kits that we would love to share with you um, as well. We took note of the high impact tools and resources that made a really big difference for the participants and the healthcare providers. And we designed these kits for families and healthcare providers. Along with our guide, our communication board, social narrative, and visual schedules, our kits include sensory tools like sunglasses, noise-canceling headphones, fidgets, and the pain deferring injection tools that Allie had discussed, the shot blocker, and some of our clinics also have the Buzzy Bee. We also have some other high-impact strategies, uh, such as lengthening appointment times, um, talking about high interest and passion areas, finding that common theme, caregiver informed strategies, 
facilitating choice and autonomy. So offering snacks, a choice of which arm you're going to get the shot in, what type of band-aid, which fidget, it's all very empowering. And then of course the three Ps, predictability, patience, and play. I had the pleasure of attending one of the first clinics we hosted in our pilot. And one of the nurses that I spoke with said, I've worked in peds for 25 years and I've never seen anything like this. Nurses who had no experience or prior training to support autistic patients have shared with us, there's no reason why we couldn't do this in every clinic. We can. Our model and process has been recognized um, for its impact from parents, participants, and caregivers at clinics across the country. Earlier in our presentation, Danielle shared some of the testimonials from uh, past experiences that our participants shared with us. And it's important to note that these, um, these testimonials that are on the screen now, this positive feedback comes from the same group of families that shared with us about their past anxiety, trauma, and restraint, recognizing that um, their children were calm and comfortable throughout what's typically a stressful situation, um, that the positive experience helped her to move past her fears, um, and that it was wonderful to see her being respected by the staff and volunteers. We love hearing things like there was no anxiety about getting the second shot because of how smooth the first one went in. Um, and overall, recognizing that these clinics are making a major difference um, for our families and can contribute to vaccine uptake and immunization across the lifespan. Getting this done in a low stress, guilt free environment, it alleviated my own stress as a parent about being judged for my child's behavior. I appreciate the patience my children were shown and getting to play afterwards helped create a more positive memory of the event, which will hopefully help the next time a vaccine is needed. That nobody had to hold him down. These are the experiences that we seek to replicate. And while we move from um, a pediatric focus, kids and teens, young adults, and elderly populations, we continue to see the impact that these tools and strategies and that patience and passion and compassion have uh, when all of us work together. So again, the VEI was geared and designed for the autistic population, but it is making a big difference in larger populations in our community. And we welcome and design our clinics to be a one-stop shop for all family members to receive their vaccinations, reducing barriers that can allow everybody to get vaccinated together. This everyone benefits philosophy um, is really a testament to the design of our model, which is reinforced with the universal design principles that tell us that what one person might need, all people can benefit from. Many people experience needle phobia and anxiety around vaccinations and our resources while developed for the autistic population have the power to benefit everyone. And you've seen how powerful and how important and how successful these clinics have been. And we understand that you may not be able to implement all of these tips, but some of these ideas are simple and easy to incorporate. And we would love to work with you um, in the upcoming flu and flu season. So we want to share these special moments with you. So please enjoy our PSA that we created focusing on a pediatric clinic, um, but it still highlights the impacts we have when communities work together. The ongoing impact of COVID-19 is felt by us all. People with autism are more likely to experience severe symptoms and complex barriers to healthcare. Individuals with intellectual disabilities are also six times more likely to die from this disease. We see you. We understand the unique challenges the autism community faces. The Autism Society is committed to vaccine education, confidence, and access through our Vaccine Education Initiative. Together, we are reimagining the vaccine experience. We prepare, educate, move, respond, and support. I got my vaccine today, and it didn't hurt! 
visual schedules and social stories prepare vaccine recipients. Today at the vaccine clinic, it was my first experience using social stories, communication boards, and visual supports to help ease the children's anxiety and help prepare them to receive the vaccines that they needed. Healthcare providers receive training to facilitate a supported experience. Because of this, our vaccine clinics have a 99% success rate. This was a successful vaccine experience because of the healthcare providers here, the play therapists, the accessory support used for the injection sites, being in their own environment. It made it very welcoming and comforting. Another great thing we've been able to do with the clinics is offer parents the option to do a drive-in so they don't even have to come out of their car. We can just pull in, they call us. Our public health workers have been amazing and just gone out. We've talked to the parents, done everything, gotten the shot, and they're done in minutes. Because of the strength of our affiliate network, we have hosted over 50 educational events and 30 vaccine clinics across the country. Because of you, we continue to advocate for a more inclusive, supported healthcare system. I could not ask for a better experience. It's for all, it's for all people. All kids can benefit from this. The toys, to the stickers, to the snack bags, to even the shop blocker made a huge difference in, in making the experience of getting a vaccine so much more calm and a positive experience. It made me feel a lot more like I was at a friend's house rather than getting a shot. I wish I could get all my vaccines moving forward like I did today. The Autism Society of America is charting a path to improve health equity to ensure that the autism community and their families have both the access and the opportunity to obtain full health potential. Together, we can be the connection. The Autism Society. The connection is you. Get connected at autismsociety.org. So while that was a snapshot of six months of our pilot program, um, we think it's important to show the, the, the hope that families experience after going through one of our clinics, uh, the confidence that healthcare providers are gaining from learning new tools and resources, and of course, the impact that it's having on the community directly. The VEI has allowed us to increase vaccine confidence and accessibility during a time when our country needs it the most. We've unpacked vaccine hesitancy and worked to repair trust barriers in local communities. We've identified key gaps in healthcare education, preparation and training, and provider confidence. And we have found passion people in every community, strengthening collaboration, partnership, and connection across the country. Earlier, we spoke about the impact that this model can have far beyond the autism community. And I'd like to take this time to tell the story uh, of our universal design aha moment in our pilot program. Our communication boards, which we showed earlier, um, were designed for those who might be non-speaking, who utilize simple supports to communicate. And while we were drafting that communication board, my grandmother uh, fell ill, she has dementia and she uh, became septic, she was hospitalized. And I had one of our earliest drafts of our communication board in my backpack when I went to visit her in the hospital. Taking out that, vac or that communication board, which was designed for our vaccine clinics and using it with my grandmother to indicate whether she was thirsty or hungry, whether she was in pain or tired, that reinforced the importance of connecting with other communities. And we are here because we believe everyone deserves accessible vaccination. Everyone deserves accessible healthcare. And we believe that it's possible for everyone. Having the opportunity to speak on platforms like the Healthy Foundation for North Dakota allows our voice, our program, and our mission to be heard and hopefully replicated. Our work is far from over. We rely on powerful community partners such as this. And when Mary reached out to me asking us to share our model with all of you, um, I was thrilled and excited to expand into a new area. And we would love to hear from you. Um, I'm gonna put our emails in the chat box. 
But if you're interested in hosting an accessible vaccine clinic or incorporating our accessible vaccine kits or any of the resources you saw today, we would love to talk to you um, and work with you. Um, we're very excited to work in North Dakota and to help increase vaccination rates this fall. And we're just so thankful for allowing us uh, this opportunity. And Mary, thank you again. And if you're interested in learning more, uh, you can email us at vei at autism-society.org. And all of our resources that you saw today are found on our website at autismsociety.org. Um, a lot of our materials are also in Spanish and we're continuing to expand into other languages as well. So please continue to check our website. We're constantly adding new resources up there too. And um, we hope that we hear from you soon. And we're open to ask, uh, answering any questions or if you have anything curious, this is a safe space to ask questions and to learn, um, or we encourage you to reach out to us after the event. Thank you so much. I'm just gonna share my slide again. Um, there we go. Can you see it? Yep. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for being here uh, from the Autism Society of America. Um, it, before we move into any questions, I do have a QR code up here for an evaluation survey. Um, feel free to take that as I look to see what questions we may have. I haven't seen any pop up. So if someone wanted just some, some samples, could, would they just email you or how would, how would you tell them to proceed with that? By reaching out to VEI at autism-society.org um, or Danielle put her personal email in the chat box as well. Uh, we love to note that our accessible vaccine kits are being assembled by um, young adults and older adults with autism and with disabilities uh, in the community. So we're reinforcing our um, equitable employment opportunities while creating access in healthcare. And we're just really proud of um, the, the, the opportunities that we have and excited to, uh, to partner with new communities. Awesome. I did get the sample kit and it, I tested it out and it is amazing. I can just see the benefit of it for sure. Um, let's see. Any questions? I'll give it a, a minute or two. All right, I'm not seeing anything. Oh, wonderful presentation, thank you. That's from Sarah. And just so everyone knows, um, all of these resources will be sent out with the recording. Um, and if you do have any questions that come up, you can always email me. I can get in touch with Allie or Danielle. Um, and get any questions that you may have after the presentation as well. So it's not looking like we have any right now. So thank you everyone um, for attending. And again, to our presenters to stay connected with us, you can follow Healthy NODAC on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Foundation for Healthy North Dakota on LinkedIn. Also, to join the coalition, visit the link to stay aware of future webinars and updates on the foundation. Um, and again, here's the QR code to take the evaluation survey before it's emailed out. We would also love to hear from you. Um, if you have a story to share, we value the stories of community members. If you know someone or have a story to share about how a disease impacted your life, 
you can contact me or leave a brief description in the evaluation survey. There is a designated question for this and we can follow up with you. Um, see if there's anything else. Just some thank yous and stuff, so awesome. I think that is it then for today. So thank you everyone for joining. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks everyone.